open your Bibles with us and let's study 2 Peter chapter 2, the last two verses of that great passage of Scripture, 2 Peter 2. I want to read you the text, class. For it had been better for them, the false teachers, it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But, I'm in verse 22 now, but it has happened unto them according to the proverb. In fact, Peter says, it has happened to them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Graphic word pictures to say the least. Peter's last glimpse of the false teachers. Well, I'm saying that. Uh, last two verses of chapter 2, uh, the last of the five. But really, honestly, into chapter 3. Peter discusses these false teachers a little bit. Not primarily, but a little bit. Listen to this. 2 Peter 3, verse number 3. Now, I'm reading ahead, chapter 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days, we are living in the last days, scoffers, mockers, unbelievers. There shall come in the last days, scoffers, Walking after their own lusts, sensual, sexual, ungodly desires. Walking after their own lusts, saying, where is the promise of his coming? Let me put that in everyday English. We don't believe Jesus is coming again. Where's any evidence of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, hundreds of years, since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were. From the beginning of the creation. And Peter says, for this, they are willingly ignorant. They are willingly, false teachers denying the second coming. Denying the judgment they will face. Listen to this, 2 Peter 3, verses 16 and 17. I think, <clears throat> I think it's another instance of these false teachers. Where... As they that are unlearned and unstable. He's talking about those false teachers. They that are unlearned and unstable rest. W-R-E-S-T. They grab a hold of something and twist it. They rest. W-R-E-S-T. As they do the other holy scriptures. Unto their own destruction. Unto their own. In other words, they take the word of God. They do not let it say what it obviously, they take it and twist it, turn it, I'll use this verb, pervert it, so that it says other things than God intended it to say. And Peter says, beware, lest you also are led away with the error of the wicked. Be careful, don't follow their ways. Do not fall from your faithfulness, from your steadfastness wow let's go now to tonight's verses uh verse 21 peter said it had been better for them it would have been uh, more profitable for them not to have known the way of righteousness not to have known the way of righteousness and the word there uh, for known it is the gnosko verb. It has epi in front of it. It is the gnosko verb. They know at least some things about the way of righteousness. They could tell you how many books are in the Bible. They could name the major and minor prophets. They know about the Bible, but they do not know the God of the Bible. That's the idea that... Uh, it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it. To turn, to turn. 
That, the verb there is epistrepho, S-T-R-E-P-H-O, to turn, and it just simply means you're going this way, and now you turn, veer, err in another direction. But better if they had never known the truth than to have known it and turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. From the holy commandment delivered unto them. And that's talking about the word of God. That's talking about this book right here. The holy commandment delivered unto them. Let me give you that word commandment. That, it plays into uh, getting a good basic meaning of Peter's idea here. Peter's uh, declaration. The holy commandment. Holy means it belongs to God. It is sanctified. It is to be reverence. Holy commandment. Uh, the word commandment is entole, spelled E-N-T-O-L-E, entole. And preacher, what does it mean? Tole, T-O-L-E, that's the Greek uh, word telos, T-E-L-O-S, and it means the finish line. It means the goal, watch my finger. It is that uh, point to which God wants me to grow and mature and develop, and I will have arrived uh, as a... Uh, in the, statue of the uh, uh, like Jesus would have me to be a grown up man in Christ uh, no longer just on the milk but on the meat of the word of God that's the idea into life. God's commands are given to help us grow God's commands are given to help us reach maturity God's commands if obeyed are given to help me to arrive uh, at manhood in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not a babe in Christ, but a man. And they have spurned. They have turned away from those commandments of God. It would have been better for them. It had been better for them. That whole uh, idea, that whole figure of speech, it would have been better for them. Jesus used that. Let me give you an example. That type of comparison or analogy. Luke 12, 48. Jesus said, To whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. In other words, they have learned much. Some of these false teachers are seminary graduates, Bible college graduates, but they didn't accept it personally. They didn't obey. They have turned and spurned from God's word. It had been... And to whom much is given, much will be required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask them. Or they've heard the truth. They spurned the truth. God will hold them to a greater judgment, a greater condemnation. Wow. Uh, just a second, class. Uh, Jesus again. Matthew 5, 29. If your right eye offends you, pluck it out. Cast it away from you. For it is profitable. That means it is better for you that one of your members perish, that you lose your eye, than that your whole body be cast into a devil's hell. God often, Jesus, the Son of God, often used those better than comparative statements. Listen to this, 1 Peter 3, 17. We haven't studied it yet. We will in a few lessons. It is better, he's saying this to the believers, it is better if the will of God so be that you suffer for well-doing, for serving God, than for evil doing. It is better. It is better. It is better. And, and so Peter, adopting the language that he heard Jesus use, it had been better for them to have never known the way of righteousness than to have known it and turned from the holy commandment delivered unto them. The holy commandment delivered unto them. And that word delivered, it's parodidomy. It means handed down to them, given to them. You know how we got our Bibles? Holy men of old. God, the Holy Ghost spoke to them. They wrote it down. And then there were people that wrote, handed it down to us, handed it down to us. Eventually it became the canon, the Bible. Uh, and then into English, our King James, it's been handed down to me. And I, I ought to hold it precious, dear to my heart. I ought to treasure it with every fiber of my being. 
Not these folks. They spurned. They turned from the holy commandment that had been handed down to them. Listen to Jude. I think it's Jude verse 3. Uh, and, and this is the way Jude puts it. We should earnestly contend for the faith. What is the faith? And he does have that limiting. The faith is that book. The faith is what I believe from that book. We should earnestly contend. That is the word to agonize. It is a Greek word that means wrestle. We ought to be willing to wrestle the devil. We ought to be willing to wrestle these false teachers. We ought to be uh, willing to wrestle their pack of lives to defend the truth of the word of God. Earnestly, Jude says, we ought to be earnestly contending for the faith, which was once, the word is hopox, once and for all, which was once delivered to the saints. I got a Bible. I'm going to love it, obey it, and cherish it, meditate on it, and obsess over it and study it. They have turned from the commandment that had been so carefully delivered unto them. Oh, the danger of knowing the truth and then spurning the truth of Almighty God. Let's go to verse number 22. Verse number 22. And I will use this word. I will purposely use this word. We're in the sanctuary of a lovely Bible preaching Baptist church uh, in, in North Carolina. Just finished preaching revival here just a, a, a little while ago. And, and I've set it up to have class. Tomorrow's a travel day. We'll be driving home. We'll have time to record the class. Verse 22. It has happened unto them. It has happened unto them. It has fallen out unto them. It has come their way. It has happened unto them according to the true proverb. According to the true proverb. And, and let me give you the word proverb there. Paroimia. Paroimia. Only used five times in the New Testament. Paroimia. Uh, one time it is translated parable. And then the rest of the times uh, as here it is translated proverb. Uh, uh, and preacher, what does it mean? It means a proverb. Let me give you the English definition. Proverb. V-E-R-B, which would be Latin. Where, V-E-R, V's are pronounced W's in Latin. Werebo, where, it means words. Proverb means something short. A few words given to take the place. Proverb to take the place of a lot of words. A few words that takes the place of a lot of words. A nugget of wisdom condensed to a few words instead of an hour-long sermon, if you will, please. It's happened to them according to the true proverb. Get ready for a few words that are going to say a ton. They're going to say a lot. The dog, this is not pleasant. The dog is turned to his own vomit. And the sow, I'm leaving out a word. I don't want to. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. It's out more than once. Again. And the sow, that old hog, the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Uh, uh, he is using an illustration from the animal world, very obviously. Let me talk a minute. And I'll, I'll, I'll watch my time. I want to get our whole class recorded. Let me talk a minute about God's animals. Here is Simon Peter teaching us a lesson about false prophets using some of God's animals, dogs and hogs. Dogs and precisely sows because the word for hog here is a feminine gender sows. Uh, listen to Job chapter 12. I'll begin at verse 7. Listen to this, class. It's astounding. Ask now the beasts. They'll tell you. Ask the fowls of the air. They'll teach you. Or speak to the earth. It shall teach you. And the fishes of the sea will declare unto thee. Declare what? That God is. That God exists. 
uh, who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord is at work. The hand of the Lord is the creator. I don't believe it. Ask the beast. Ask the fowls of the air. Ask the fishes, God's animals, teaching spiritual truth. Listen to Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. That verse says the ant, that little insect, the ant can teach me wisdom if I will apply my heart to learn from her. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Sluggard means a lazy man. Go to the ant, thou lazy man. Consider her way. And if there's ever been a worker in the insect world, the ants are workers, diligent workers. Yeah, but preacher, all oh, that's Old Testament. The Old Testament's a Bible too. May I announce that? But listen to Jesus. Matthew 6, verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air. Look at them. Jesus is saying, study them. Learn from them. For they do not sow, nor do they reap, nor do they gather uh, crops into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Yep. And, uh, and if God can feed the fowls of the air, you're better than the birds. Uh, the liberals and modernists don't believe that. But God said human beings are better than the birds. Human beings are more distinguished, uh, uh, have more dignity than the animals. Uh, yeah, the Bible is an anthropocentric book. Man is special in God's eyes. Uh -uh. Are you not much better than they? My, my, my. In Job 38, after Job has suffered through all those agonizing hours, days, weeks, and months, God comes on the scene. God appears out of a whirlwind. God speaks to Job out of a whirlwind. And in Job 38, guess what God discusses? The lions, the ravens, the birds, the goats, the hinds of the field, the deer, the doe, uh, the wild ass, the unicorn, peacocks, ostriches, horses, particularly the war horse and the eagles. That's what God wants to talk about to Job. Job, I created every one of them. Job, I know what I'm doing with them and I know what I'm doing with you. God discussing his animals. And that's what Peter is doing right here. Now, and uh, by the way, God's the creator of those animals. God placed those animals on this earth. Peter with the animals. And he's talking about a dog and he's talking about a hog. Both those animals are unclean animals according to the economy, the mosaic law of an almighty God. Listen to Jesus on the dogs. Preacher, he talked about them too. He did. Matthew 7, 6. Give not that which is holy to the dogs. Don't cast you your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and then turn and attack you, turn and rend you. There comes a time when a man's given the truth, the precious truth of the gospel, the grace of God, the love of God, the blood of Jesus, and he spurns and he rejects and he, and he goes negative and he mocks God and he spits at this book right here. Uh, God said, hush, don't, no longer cast your pearls, the gospel, before those who Yep, Jesus addressed those animals. And, and uh, Leviticus eleven seven, it, it, one of the verses says you cannot eat the swine. Uh, they are unclean. And, and, uh, and uh, Peter's going to take these animals and teach us a spiritual lesson thereby. Hey, let me, let me show you a situation in the Old Testament where those animals are presented and then the lesson is taught. Proverbs 26, verse 11. Proverbs 26, verse 11. I can't wait to read it to you. My mouth's dry, excuse me. As a dog returns to his vomit, hey, hey, Peter may be alluding to this in, in 2 Peter 2, 22. As a dog returns to his vomit, 
So a fool returns to his folly. So a fool returns to his folly. These false teachers are, are time out. I, I got to ask this question because somebody's going to ask it. Let's deal with it right now. Preacher, were these false teachers ever saved? Here's Brother Bagel's answer. I do not believe they were ever saved. But preacher, in our text tonight, after they've known the way of truth, they've turned from it. There's knowing the Bible, and then there's really knowing the Bible. I didn't word that well. There is heart knowledge. I'm sorry. There is head knowledge, and then there is heart belief and heart faith. I do not believe these false teachers are really saved. You say, can, can, you, can you give me something to go on there? Jude, the little epistle of Jude, describes the same crowd as Peter is in 2 Peter 2. These false teachers. Jude verse 19. He said, they are sensual. They think too much about sex and debauchery and adultery and fornication and lascivious, those kinds of sins. They are sensual, having not the spirit having not the Holy Spirit. And can I make an announcement? If a man does not have the Holy Ghost, you're going to say amen. He's lost. The, the one that brought me to Calvary, convicted me of my sins, and then placed me in the body of Jesus when I believed the body, that's the Holy Ghost. I've got him in me. He lives within me. I'm saved. My body's a temple. But having not the Holy Ghost to God, no they are not saved. Yeah, but preacher, you're saying there's lost people in the church. You're saying that there are people who are never even saved that could be in these assemblies. Yes. Jesus said in the wheat field, there can be tares. The enemy, the devil, came and sowed some tares in the wheat field among professing Christians. There are some false believers. Matthew 13, among the kingdom parables. How will I ever know, preacher, if I'm genuine up? The proof is in the fruit. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to say it again. The proof, you're saved. Look at the fruit. You are bad. Well, preacher, I'm not bearing any fruit. If you're not bearing any fruit, I doubt. I'm not the judge, but I doubt you're really saved. What kind of fruit? Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Here's the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. In Jesus, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness in Christ, faith, meekness, temperance, all energized by the Holy Ghost of God. Mm -hmm. Earlier, Peter called them natural, brute, beasts. Now, he's calling them dogs and sows. They do not know Jesus as their Savior. That's Brother Bagel's answer to the question. First uh, John 2.19. Let me read you this. 1 John 2, 19. It almost solves the problem for us. They went out from us, John said, these false teachers. They went out from us, but they were not of us. They weren't part of our assembly. They weren't really Christian believers. They went out from us. They were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that they might show themselves, that they might be manifest, that they were not of us. Hey, 1 Corinthians eleven nineteen. let me give you that one. I'm watching the time. 1 Corinthians eleven nineteen. Paul said there must be heresies among you. Must be. It's a necessity. God says it's going to happen. There must be some false, there will be some false teachers among you here. That they which are approved, that the real Christians, that they which are approved, approved as dokimos, they that have taken the test and passed it, that they which are approved may be made manifest, may come out and shine like the noonday sun. God said there'll be false teachers, so we'll find out who the true Christians are really are. The true Christians won't follow the false Christians. The true believers, they'll hang on to that book. They'll be, they'll be solid in that book. They won't follow the errors of 
those false teachers. My, 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 there's so much that could be said there. Romans chapter 8, verse number 9. Romans chapter 8, verse number 9. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, if the Spirit of Jesus is not dwelling in me, and he is, I know he is, I've got the peace and the assurance. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If a man doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, that man does not belong to the Lord. He is none of his. Mm -mm -mm. Preacher, they're hogs, they're dogs. Yes, they are. It's a matter of their nature. I want to use that word. It is a matter of their nature. They're still operating according to that old nature that Adamic nature, that depraved nature, a dog's nature will always be eat the vomit. Get sick, vomit, go back later, eat the vomit. And again, that's repulsive. I know, I think Peter means it to be repulsive. He's got the nature of a dog. And the sow, you can bring her in, wash her, put a little powder on her, tie a little paint ribbon on her tail. You leave the door open out, she'll go and hit the first mud pole. That's her nature to wallow in the mud. They're acting according, and these false teachers, they want ungodly, filthy sex. They want money, money, money. That's their ungodly. They want pride, pride, pride. That's their wicked nature. But oh, when you get saved, I hope I hear an amen. When you get saved, God gives us a new nature. All things pass away. All things become that a man be in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He becomes a new creation. He becomes a new creature. I've got that new nature dwelling down in me. John 3, 3. Jesus made it plain to Nicodemus. That which is of the flesh is flesh. That's that old nature. And more false teachers have got that. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. I'm living according to the new nature. Hallelujah. But I will say this, and it's the miracle of the new birth. <laughs> I want to say it again. It's the miracle of getting saved. God can turn tares into wheat. He can turn a sinner into a saint. It's the miracle of regeneration. Hallelujah to God. And I'm going to go ahead and say this. God can turn a dog into a lamb. God can turn a hog into a, a little sh a sheep of his pasture if they get born again by the grace of God. Now these false teachers that have gone this far, likely they have become what Romans chapter one calls reprobates. Few, if any, will ever turn and come back. But when they first start, come back and get saved if they'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as they're saved. Listen to me. Satan is a counterfeiter. Some of these may believe they're saved. Satan is a counterfeiter. Lord, Lord, we preached in your name. We've cast out the, and Jesus will say, depart from me. I never knew you. The devil's a counterfeiter. The devil's a deceiver. Oh my, that's why Peter said in 2 Peter 1, 10, brethren, be diligent. Give it your best. Do it with all your heart. Make your calling and election sure. Be sure. Ground, foundation sure. Solid as a rock sure that you are washed in the blood of that. Preacher, have you got that new nature? I do. Preacher, are you saved? I am. How do you know? Here it is, Romans 8, 16. Here's how I know I'm saved. For the Spirit himself bears witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. Romans 8, 16. And if you're saved, probably right this second, the Holy Ghost is saying, yes, yes, it's fluttered in my heart. He's a moving in my, yes, you're saved. Yes, Jesus lives in you. Yes, you're on your way to, and then something else I'll point out in these last few seconds. Not once did Peter try to reclaim these false teachers. He knows they've rejected. He knows they've heard the truth and not believed the truth and rebelled against the truth and essentially does not make any effort to reclaim them. Whereas in James, 
Hallelujah.